Welcome back to the Murphy Table. What I've got here today is something I, I'm testing here. I'm probably a little behind in testing it. It's the Pocket Map Scenario Number 4 from Old School Tactical Volume 2. The uh, Pocket Maps, if I remember correctly, were stretch goals. And the maps, I don't have the exact size on here, and I kind of zoomed in a little bit. Let me just zoom out a little bit, show you the... Yeah, so I mean these are considerably smaller than the full maps that take up your table. This kind of reminds me of maybe something you would pull out of like Advanced Squad Leader. So you have a you know your little section right here. So this is fantastic if you're creating some of your own scenarios. You can play on a much smaller area. So the the pocket maps are wonderful, and this particular scenario actually uses both pocket maps, and it's still a lot smaller than the maps that come in Old School Tactical Volume 1. Kind of weird that we would be happy to have smaller maps, but I love the options, and they're geomorphic, so you can line them up to create different you know, sizes that you need. So fantastic stuff. The scenario that I'm running is Breaking Out. Of course, name is not quite final. Uh, it's got American troops down here in the south, and we've got Germans up north that you can't see yet. And then we have Germans over here on the west. And the scenario, I gotta, I gotta provide some feedback here. It doesn't quite tell me necessarily. Am I? It's called breakout. So am I actually trying to get somewhere? There's no victory points for getting off the map. Basically, we get points for eliminating German targets. And then Germans. It says uh, victory point for each building hex between row E and Q. Uh, that they control. So we're trying to keep the Germans out of the building. Oh, okay. So if we're trying to keep Germans out of the buildings, then I would say Americans are on the defense. So not quite a breakout, more of a break in for the Germans. Anyway, uh, American forces have quite a bit here. Let's see if you can see with the old tweezers. This isn't super close. So we'll just say here's a M4A1. I've got a rifle unit with a light machine gun here. It's kind of a stack. Or a medium machine gun. And it's got one of the officers. Here we've got another rifle unit with a bazooka. Then I've got a M36. Oh, you know, I put an M36 in there. And they're not supposed to have one. I think I was just looking through it and somehow I put it in there in the counter mix. Oops. Uh, then I have a half track. This was the M4A3 right there. And then we have another rifle unit with a lieutenant and a BAR. Here I've got engineers. So I just tried to put a little defensive perimeter. Uh, I know there's some German tanks up north we'll take a look at in a second. So I try to put, I only had two bazookas. So I try to have a bazooka on the north and a bazooka over here because there's a tank. And the scenario didn't say who who set up f first. It just has the list of folks, like the the, the who I need to have, impulse dice, gut check. Um, then the German forces set up first there. And then those ones set up second. So it didn't quite tell me who necessarily had to set up first. So I just... I just placed all my Germans, and then I placed the Americans, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but over here for the attacking Germans, I've got a Panzer IV H. Then there's a rifle squad. Well, it's a second line unit, actually. Uh, Sergeant Bond, another second line unit. And then down here, I think this was an actual rifle unit. Actual German rifle unit with the light machine gun. Another officer, another Panzer IV, and then a second line unit here. And he's in a building. So I try to put all the infantry in buildings so they'd have some protection as they come out. Uh, so there's there's a little bit here trying to break in. And let's take a look at what we got up north. All right, what we got up here, this would be pocket map number one. Then we have a second line unit, another Panzer IV. Here's another Panzer IV. And another second line unit. This here has a, a light machine gun and an officer. You probably can't see those too well. I don't think the camera zoomed in super well. Uh, but then here's a rifle unit, and then it's got an officer with them and a light machine gun, and another second line unit. 
And then we've got the Panther over there. So that that's the stuff coming, going to be moving south. So I've got the Americans kind of set up to where they got to defend both directions. I've never, like I said, I haven't played this yet, so I'm really not sure how this is going to play out. But we'll come back here to the other map for just a moment. So back here, I, I don't know if you can tell, but... The artwork is fantastic, and this is just a print and play. Like this is just printed out on some cardstock, but it looks really, really good. So we have all kinds of buildings that we're responsible for defending down here in this southern section. Uh, here's another anti-tank. So I've got I've got a little bit of armor, just trying to, you know, defend what's coming in. It's just really hard to say how this will play out. So I probably won't play this as like a play-by-play, step-by-step, because uh, I, I just want to get this kind of played through, provide some feedback. So I might take some pictures or maybe every once in a while I'll film a little after action. Uh, the cards that I have, all of the unit cards, I've got those on the iPad. So I don't have any cards to show you right now for like the different vehicle stats and stuff like that. So this will just give me a chance now that I've got these maps printed out. I'll just start play testing the scenario. So how I do that is, I'm going to use my um, AI that I made. So I'm going to, it's solo, it's a two-player game, right? You know, old school tactical, but I have my own solo system. So let me show you how I'm going to play the Russians, for, or not the Russians, I'm going to play the Germans for this. All right, so just a quick run through. This is the flow chart that I'm going to use. That, that's really all it is, is for running the AI. I have two charts here. This one, basically the way this works out is you just pick a unit on the board and usually we start with the closest unit to, you know, what, like a closest enemy unit to a friendly unit and we're going to check to see if that unit is either broken or shaken and then I have a little intelligence path to tell me if the unit wants to actually rally or if it can rally. So for instance, if I follow my chart, it asks, is the closest unit, is it, you know, shaken or broken? No. Then we're going to go to the green insight test, which is what we have here then on this flow chart. It looks like there's a lot of stuff here, but I've been using this quite a bit. It goes pretty quick. So it just has some yes, no questions. So like, is the clo closest unit in line of sight to an enemy? Yes or no. If it says yes, then it asks, are they in range to fire? If they're not in range, there's a no path. Are they on a defensive mission? So for this one, the Germans aren't on the defensive because they're trying to capture buildings. So it says, are they on the defense? No. Then it's checking to see, are they eligible for movement and, and different things like that. So real simple. Or are they in line to an enemy? So if, if I look at a German unit, I just pick any unit on the board. And like I said, usually pick the closest one that isn't, you know, used. Um, you know, so you've got to look in a little bit. You know, if I've used up some units, I'm not going to pick them for the you know, eligibility, because it asks, are they eligible? Well, no, then pick another unit, which exactly it says here in my path. So if they're in line of sight, or like if they're not in line of sight, are they eligible to move? No, then we check the next unit available for movement. Because, you know, with the game, you get two actions, so sometimes you might move, or you'll fire, and you still got one action. You can only move once in a turn, so this just simply says, hey, can they move? Nope. Then let's let's go to another unit and see if it can fit the path. Uh, so you know if they're eligible to move, then it looks to see are they stacked because you know you can do group movements. And it says like if they're stacked, are they eligible for group move? If they are, are they adjacent to an enemy? Because if they're eligible for like a, a group move and they're next to an enemy, then you know they might do an assault move. So it's kind of cool. This covers most situations that you're going to encounter when I play a scenario uh, takes into account fire groups and different things the only thing that my AI doesn't do is direct the actions of like vehicles loaded with troops or if you're moving units onto the board should they be loaded up some of that you'll have to kind of play through but this allows me to play every single scenario in old school tactical without uh, a separate scenario. That's that's why I use this for game testing. 
since I just want to kind of have an opponent, if you will, to test the scenarios, I just use this path here. So it's not really an artificial intelligence, it's more of a quick, you know, what would you do? Here's some options. Oh, okay, we're, you know, like if I'm in line of sight, yes, we are. Are we in range to fire? Yes. So we come down to the fire path. Are we a group? No, we're not a group. Can we even damage the target? <laughs> That's something. Sometimes you run into where your infantry might be in range of a tank, but they're not going to hurt the tank. So there's a no path. Okay, well, we, we can't damage the target. So if we're in range or not in range, we might dig in for cover or retreat, you know, things like that. So um, I kind of like it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start testing this scenario. I'll probably, this will probably be the only scenario I really play because I want to play it like maybe two or three times. Run once where the German is the AI. Play once me as the Americans and then switch it. I'll play once as the Germans and once with the Americans as the AI and give some feedback. That's about it. That's my next project I got going on. So hopefully kind of gives you an idea of some stuff coming up for old school uh, Tactical 2, you know, the Kickstarter is finished a while ago. Uh, all the art and everything is ready to go. I think Mark said that this should be shipping off to the printers around February 15th or so. So that's why I probably am only going to get a couple of games in with just this one scenario. But I want to at least provide some feedback. So if it comes out to the game and you say, oh man, this pocket map scenario 4 is terrible, well, you can probably blame me because I. <laughs> <laughs> that, that means I was okay with it, and uh, my AI probably broke it. So uh, hopefully you all like the scenario when it comes out, and I hope you all like the maps and the uh, components when, when they're in your hands as well. Everything's looking really good. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.